Hey, what's up, Gleb? Alexandrov here. Welcome to the new, very exciting web series on game development within Blender and Unreal Engine, and maybe some other very exciting tools. So this web series is for those who want to make their first, or maybe their second, game after the first one failed. So if you use Blender and maybe are familiar with the game engines, but you don't know where to start and how to put it all together to create an indie game, join me, Gleb Alexandrov, and. A.D. Burroughs on this very exciting journey into the uncharted territories of game design, game prototyping, concept art creation and various other things related to indie game development. Uncharted, see what I did here? And yeah, I still have these headphones around because I love them despite their sh so the series will be structured like this. You'll be able to find it on my YouTube channel and on AD Burrow's YouTube channel as well. We will spotlight the entire game development pipeline from slightly different perspectives. Okay, let's go! Hey, hey, shrimps! In this installment of the Game Dev Stuff, we will talk about creating game concept art in Blender. And right away, you probably want to ask, why Blender? Why not use a good old 2D painting apps? Or say, Unreal? The beauty of this method is that we can use the tools that we already are comfortable with, like we're gonna guess that the majority of our viewers are pretty comfortable with Blender, to quickly iterate through the game dev process to see if there is any potential visual appeal to your idea. And once you see that it started to come together, you can BAM! You can easily share it with your teammates for further discussion. What else? It allows you to preview a vertical slice of your future game, whatever it is, and by vertical slice I mean a glimpse into the final product in some sense. Well, to some extent. Now let's take a look at some examples of creating concept art within Blender. Here we go, I have Blender 2.8, you can download it from blender.org. In the render engine tab I will choose Eevee because Eevee is super hot and awesome. It's an obvious choice for what we're gonna do because it's real time, it's very important. I'm making up this thing on the fly. It would be fun to see what we will be able to create. And the first thing that I'm gonna do with the camera is recreate the top-down look. And during this stage we can start experimenting with the elements of our game, like with the camera angle, for example, and also materials and lighting to make sure that player stands out from background, that kind of thing. So the crucial elements, the player character and the environment are already there. Hooray! Now we can start brainstorming different ideas in a freestyle manner. Uh, for example, what if we added a bunch of obstacles to the level? With this concept art, I will be aiming for a casual, mobile, indie type of look, I think. So it will be very bright, cheerful, kind of soft. So I will crank up the energy on the light source. Enable contact shadows, just for a little bit of extra details. And in the shadow settings, I will enable soft shadows. But it's still a little bit dark and moody, so let's try to spend more time on the lighting. And what also helps to sell this softness of the light is the filmic color management with the base contrast set as the look. And it's worth noting that you need to update the viewport to have it take effect. Alright, uh, that looks pretty cheerful already, I love it. Now let's start adding some more elements, that will be fun. For example, I'm going to throw in some objects that will work as a failure condition. Yeah, that will be a pit. So if you fall into the pit, that's the end. Next, I will jump into the camera settings, viewport display tab and increase the alpha value. We can imagine that this viewport is a mobile device screen of some kind. I know that the aspect ratio is a little bit weird, but anyway, you got the point. Alright, so we have established some basic elements, but what do we have to do with the camera? Thankfully, it's very easy to test and to predict. I think it will be attached to the object like this, so the screen will be centered at all times. Now we can add some enemies into our concept art. Let's start off with the cube, dissolve one edge to make it a triangle, or rather a prism, I guess. And let's add a bright red material, because that's kind of a convention in the game design. Of course, it also depends on the cultural background and many different variables, but let's make the enemies red. So the player is smooth and vibrant blue and the enemies are sharp and red. So the colors help to inform the gameplay, that's what we're aiming for. So maybe there is more than one enemy. Now we can experiment with the different ways of how enemies can 
deal damage to us, the player. So yeah, they shoot lasers at us. How original. Maybe they go... Doo, doo, doo. Here is the boss, and that would be silly. Mm -hmm. So what can we do with them? Maybe we can push them into the pits. I think that would add a really fun element into the gameplay, how to push them without getting hit by the laser. Or maybe we can escape this way. And if we go this way, we'll fall into the pit ourselves. As soon as you get the main elements in place, the players, the enemies, the failure conditions, the obstacles, you can really shuffle it around and simulate different gameplay situations. So it's all about churning the look and gameplay ideas as quick as possible, and Blender helps tremendously. So I made the camera wider to show more of the level. Once again, it's very likely that if we take it to the game engine, the camera will be attached to the player with some kind of a spring arm. So it will follow the player like this. And by the way, during these quick experiments with motion and stuff like that, you can capture the screen using OpenOBS or something like that, because images speak louder than words and animations speak even louder. Alright, so the next thing I experimented with is the bloom effect in Eevee. I tweaked that threshold of the effect a little bit, so only the laser beams are glowing. Hopefully that will make them more attention-grabbing, because they are supposed to be the hazardous elements that could deal damage to the player. So the additional glow will help to get this message across. And now I rendered the image, let's save it. I will put the snapshot of the imaginary gameplay situation into a special folder. I will call it concept R01, hit save. Now I will save the Blender scene by pressing Ctrl S, then go Ctrl Shift S and save it under a different name, because next I want to try a different snapshot and I don't want to override uh, the blend file or something like that. So it's time for some action. Let's imagine that a few seconds have passed. We hit this guy straight in the triangular face like this. And it fell into a chasm. And uh, by the way, the camera should be recentered like this, probably. You know, it's so fun to conceptualize the game situations as if uh, you paused the game and what you see on the screen, you try to communicate that using Blender. So the lasers probably traveled over there. And this guy tried to sneak in. He pushed the box and let's render it out for the second time. Press Shift S and save it under a different name, like Concept Art 2 Alrighty, that's the second snapshot. Let's keep experimenting. Maybe we can switch over to the orthographic mode in the camera settings. Orthographic means representing a three-dimensional objects in 2D space without perspective distortion. And now just set your imagination free. Maybe the ball is green to create the complementary contrast between the enemies and the player. And maybe the lighting is dramatic like this. <laughs> Interestingly, the lower left corner of the screen has a hint of a light coming in. So it may signalize about the exit or something like that. So basically it creates a little bit of uh, direction to go to. At least in theory. I'm not sure that it actually works. No, I don't think it works. But you know, we can stumble across very cool ideas and ideas that suck. That's normal. So congrats, my friend, we created three snapshots from the rolling ball game that will never see light of day. But nevertheless, that's the glimpse of the process of conceptualizing the gameplay and look and feel ideas within Blender before even touching the game engines like Unreal. And oh my dear, that's so damn exciting. Alright, so how about using Cycles instead of Eevee for prototyping your ideas? Of course, it's pretty noisy and slow compared to Eevee, but it has very cool benefits as well, like sheer simplicity of setting up lighting and stuff like that, because it's a classical path tracing render engine. Oftentimes, everything you need is just one light source, and Cycles will handle everything for you. Soft shadows, light bounces, everything. So it may help to bring the iteration time down even further, and it's great. For example, you can just tweak the environment strength, and voila! Bam! In a second, it's a completely different vibe, and you don't have to recalculate uh, light probes and so on, rebake lighting. Here you can see how we utilized Cycle's capabilities for conceptualizing a top-down physics shooter game. I'm not entirely sure that this genre exists, but uh, basically your enemies can shoot and you cannot. What you can do instead is manipulate physics like, like you have a gravity gun. 
So you can grab and throw barrels, you can block bullets with different objects, stuff like that. We sketched out this prototype in Blender in 20 minutes and it's so easy to change things around. For example, we can grab the camera and make it orthographic. Uh, that will make it look kind of like a 2.D game. And uh, further down the line, the decisions like this potentially can make their way into the game engine. Like you will have some ideas about what works and what doesn't work. Like the panoramic camera probably won't work in this concept, but it looks ace. <laughs> Yeah, basically, so the key takeaway from this video, I think, is that you can communicate your ideas in a very efficient manner, and even you can come up with the new ideas by simply sketching it out in Blender. The quick iteration cycle and the ability to change things around in a blink of an eye are really, really important. Okay, so what I want to say is that producing the vertical slices of your imaginary game before even starting the development of this game is a huge time saver, potentially. And by the way, see this Firefly character? It's actually very simple, let's open it up. This is just a sphere, technically speaking, sphere split in half, and uh, generally speaking, simplicity is a mantra for us. Um, keep it simple, stupid. Okay, one very interesting aspect of generating ideas in a visual way is that they bring the new ideas with them. Like when we stumbled across this Firefly thing, and it was a few weeks ago, a totally different game concept started to emerge. Basically, it sounded like, what if this firefly is lost in a labyrinth and it needs to find a way out, and the labyrinth is dark and full of terrors and stuff like that, and you can shine, but only under special circumstances. Mm hmm <laughs> We'll probably talk about that in the next episode of the Game Dev Stuff. For now, I'm just gonna show you the vertical slice of this firefly game so you can see how cool it is. And I wonder if you would be able to guess the actual gameplay mechanics. Alright, I'll leave it here. Alright folks, thanks for watching, that was Gleb Alexandro for CreativeShrimp.com, that was the new web series on game development, presented by me, Gleb Alexandrov and Aidy Burroughs. We are very interested in hearing from you, so feel free to leave a comment below and tell us what do you think is the most difficult part of game creation pipeline for you personally. Is it designing a gameplay logic or creating the game assets or maybe exporting it from Blender to the game engine of your choice? So what is the most soul-crushing nightmare of game development for you personally? Maybe we'll be able to tackle this problem further down the road and help you overcome this difficulty somehow, so you never know. And by the way, feel free to tweet your screenshots of your imaginary games that you have prototyped within Blender, and we will be absolutely happy to retweet it. Uh, the more social media buzz, uh, the more interesting is the process. And now I will pass it over to AD and make sure to watch the first B episode of Game Development Stuff. See you! Game development stuff. Game development. Indie game development. For nerds. Yes.